I'm Lima Milan, and in this video we're going to explore Ableton Live's Chorus Ensemble device. So Chorus Ensemble is quite a few different effects in once. It's two different types of chorus effects, and chorus being other copies of a signal being modulated by pitch. So we sum them together with the original signal and we get a sense of movement to a sound. And then it also has a vibrato option, which is an overall global change of pitch as well. So let's take a look at this first percussive melodic part. So there's a sense of space to it already. It's quite nice texturally, it's quite thick sounding. Um, but what we can do is we can add a chorus device to this using the classic uh, option, which is basically two delay lines, which you merge with the original signal using a dry wet. And we can use this to try and just thicken up the sound and get a slightly wider sound as well, because the delay lines will be different on the left and the right. Now, if you change the rate, to something slow, you're literally changing the delay of the left and right speaker at a slower rate. So you get a, a less rhythmic sense of change, but you do still get a sense of change. So I'm going to actually dry the signal, set it to dry, and then blend that in so you can hear what it's doing. We can um, add a, a, a deeper sense of amount to that using the amount control. taking the actual the pitch deviation to a, a further extent. And there's a feedback option as well, which is available on this and the next option, which is ensemble mode, uh, which basically takes the output of the chorus and feeds it back into itself, which creates a resonance of the actual chorus effect and just makes it sound stronger. So let's increase that. And if we go for a more subtle application, So I'll try it without and with. Right, so that's that covered. That's got a sense of movement to it now. Let's move over to the hi hats. Again, it's not a it's not a sound that needs thickening up particularly, just it would benefit for a sense of space. So let's go for ensemble this time. So this is three delay lines rather than the two. So if I actually move between the two, just in their default settings, you should hear that it's a difference in sound. There's a much more unified aspect of how the actual delay lines are happening across the middle as well as the sides, whereas the classic tends to be way more deviation on the left and the right, and it creates a bigger sense of, of shift in the stereo uh, field. Um, so let's go for ensemble on this one. Let's play around with the rate again, the speed that these delay lines are deviating up and down in pitch, the amount in terms of how much deviation is happening, and uh, we'll then get to the feedback after that. So there's a particular rate, if I go for the faster rates that it runs at, which actually tunes into the frequency content, in this case of the noisy hi-hats as well. So that's what I was playing with, it was the rate as like a tuning control, and find that point that the, the rate at which the chorus is running at is uh, complementary to the information within the hi-hats. So let's see if we can enforce that with the feedback control. Now, in this particular instance, it's a fairly low hi-hat sound. It's not just wispy highs. Um, if we're dealing with a sound, um, let's say the pad that we get too soon, there's a cut you can apply to the actual filter to be able to just alleviate how much information is allowed to go through to the chorusing stage. So I'm going to play with that and see if it helps sort of lighten the density of the application of uh, chorus here. Yeah, 
it removes the dominant lower frequencies. So again, it just it changes the perspective of the chorus in relation to the original signal. So it's another option of balancing the chorus alongside the original signal as alongside the dry wet with a slightly different character. So um, both classic and ensemble modes do have this width control as well. So we can emphasize or reduce the amount of stereo information that's available. Um, so I'm going to play with that and figure out you know, where I want it to be within the actual the mix. Interestingly, with the dry wet, it really demonstrates what's going on. So on the dry, we have our existing panorama. We have our existing state of whether it's mono or stereo. And on the very side with the wet control, you have an incredibly phasey version of the signal because of what the ensemble mode's doing. It's creating very different information on the left and the right. And somewhere between the dry and the wet, there's a happy relationship of those different frequencies and that different timbre um, to get a balance of, again, thickness to the sound. In this case, going for a fairly wide sound as well, um, but not to detract from the original qualities that the sound had in the first place. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's move over to this, which is our, I think, our drone sound. I've dropped, I've taken bits away from this. It's not a drone anymore. It's more of a, a single guitar sound. I've already got a chorus loaded on here, so let's just turn this on. And this, uh, I want to demonstrate with the uh, feedback control. So let's really ramp that up. So with the feedback, you can tell that it's, it's really enforcing the movement and pitch that the chorus is doing. Um, we also have a phase reversal switch here, which means that basically when the chorus is passed through the first time, when it comes back the second time, the polarity of the signal coming back in is flipped. And therefore, it's not just the same signal coming back over itself and having the relationship with the existing signal. It's in the opposite direction. So there's all sorts of other cancellation and resonances that will occur. So it's another flavor of feedback. So very extreme, but it's just, you know, playing around with the options of sound design and we can blend that in. Right, so moving over to a pad sound we have here. Let's get another chorus on here. So we've covered classic and ensemble. Let's look at vibrato. So you notice that quite a few of the functionalities have changed. We haven't got the feedback option now. Um, what we do have instead is an aspect of offset where the, the um, signals can be offset against each other in terms of how the pitch is changing on the two uh, signals. And then we also have a shape of, of how the uh, pitch change goes up and down, whether it's a linear line as in a, a triangle wave or whether it's a curved line like a sine wave. So I'm going to pull that back and let's just apply this. Let's have the amount down for a start. We'll have the rate fairly high so you can hear that it's doing a, a classic vibrato to begin with. But what I actually want to use this application for is to create a sense of detuning and drift. So this is a, a classic uh, ability to make what would be a, a perfectly uniform pad sound sound like it's just slightly going out of control, uh, not control, out of uh, tune as it plays. So a really slow rate is what I'll end up at, but in a very slight deviation of pitch. And it just makes it sound like it might have been recorded onto an old tape machine or something like that. So the offset is incredibly sensitive here because we are literally hearing just the vibrato signal. There's no dry wet. So 
we either have the whole left and right signal going up and down in pitch in unison where the offset is set to zero or we can have anywhere up to 180 degrees where the pitch goes up on one side and the pitch goes down the opposite on the other as well. Um, I'm choosing to just have an incredibly small offset of degree between the left, uh, the left signal's rise in pitch and the other right signal's rise in pitch. They're just slightly tracking each other in a delayed sense and you just get a slight sense of width without it going too out of phase um, and losing the definition of the sound. So the last thing I wanted to cover was using chorus and ensemble as a, an effects design tool. Um, so I've got a what you could class as an activator or a trigger sound. Um, so if we add a chorus to this track um, and I turn it off, it's just a kick drum. Now we turn chorus on. It's not enough. Uh, information over time to really hear much apart from the fact that the signal's gotten slightly louder and a slightly different timbre to it. Um, but if I go for high amounts of feedback, remember that loop of the output going to the input, it basically acts like a, a release or a decay to the sound. And then we increase the amount. Increase the feedback more. In fact, put it fully wet and you'll just hear the actual chorus side of it. Try that with Ensemble. And then again, remember the flipping of the, the phase of the feedback loop gets you a very different texture. Okay, I mean, if we wanted to freeze and flatten that, especially if we had a longer part for it, we could definitely resample parts of that and turn it into some sort of a baseline as well, um, or feed that into reverbs and so on and create some interesting warping kind of sounds too. One last parameter to cover on the Chorus Ensemble device is the warmth control. And the warmth control is a mix of a filter and a saturation, so a distortion or the feeling that the signal is exceeding the headroom of the signal path. And it's a good way to get a slightly more tonal or vintage sound. So I've got the pad sound here. It'll be quite subtle, but as I increase this, you should be able to hear there's a slight change in the timbre and also that the signal is becoming slightly more harmonically rich. And to make that even more obvious, what we can do is go to the master bus and do the same thing. In this case, I've actually turned the chorus range down, so it's not actually doing any pitch deviation. And I'm going to use the warmth control just completely by itself to, to demonstrate this sound. really hear it when that kick drum makes the sound effects that when the warmth is turned up we've got a really low distortion that's coming through there as well. In this video we've covered exploring Ableton Live's chorus and ensemble device, what chorus is, the two flavours between chorus and ensemble mode, and then how vibrato can be used for fast rapid pitch changes or slow drift to our sounds.